between 2008 and 2012, Marcus Bean made 144 appearances for Brentford, scoring 14 goals. After a tricky spell at Blackpool, he was released in the summer and put pen to paper at Griffin Park. Um, I was really low, so it was a low point in my career. Um, I was doing up to about nine hours on the motorway. I was coming down on a Saturday after a game. I was coming down on a Tuesday night. I was going back up on a, on a, on a, uh, on a Saturday again. So it was like loads of time in the car, away from my family, really low point in my career. And I said to myself, in that summer, if I didn't get a move back down south, then I was going to explore uh, other avenues outside of the game. And it's West London. I'm a West London boy. So that, that made the decision very easy. Andy Scott were, was enthusiastic. He said he wanted to try and build a team around me. He knew what, um, what strengths I, and what I could bring to the side. And um, that and, and obviously being in West London was, was basically the dream move for me at the time. The big thing that stuck in my mind about that, that season and, and when I first got to the club is, is the dressing room spirit. Andy Scott brought together a really good bunch and, and any team that's successful is about having that connection and, and we had it for sure in, in abundance. And not only that, we didn't have it just with, as a team as players, we had it with the fans as well. There was a real affinity with the fans in it and that's what got us through, I think, that season. Man, that coach journey home after Darlene was just, yeah, it was amazing. It was, a long one, as we know, Darlington's a miles away, but that was just, yeah, surreal because I think at the start of the season, no one gave us a chance. Like, that was a weird thing. And, um, yeah, just the way the season panned out and we just got stronger and stronger. And I just remember that day at, um, at home to Luton. I've just watched some of the videos back um, recently and it's just, yeah, it was just a great game, great day. L great goal from Adam Newton, who was our leader and a captain, another guy who was really selfless. Um, and it couldn't have happened for a better person to score that goal and then the whole celebration, the atmosphere, it was a, it was a great day. That was probably why I was pretty successful that, that season scoring goals because of Kev. Um, I've never really played from someone with someone who is, I'd say, more unselfish than me in the sense of he's a team player and his, his game was about making other people around him better when normally me who's doing that for other people I feel in my career and that was why I got, I think I got nine goals that season or something like that, and that was my biggest return. And that's because I had freedom to run around knowing that there's someone behind me that was gonna unselfishly do, do the, the dirty work and keep things ticking. I would have loved to stay. I was, I was very disappointed to be leaving, but I knew quite early on, no, not quite midway through that season that I probably wouldn't get a new contract. Um, and I fully respected his decision. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was probably the right one at the time because they, they went on to do um, good things and there was, it was good competition for place in, in, at the time, so no. I'm learning a lot behind the scenes about um, how the club um, does its um, recruitment stuff, drive, and for me it's the, one of the best places to learn because I feel that they've got the best recruitment department um, probably in the country, um, bar none, so I'm loving that part of it and loving to be back at the club. Um, I'm doing a Masters in Sports Directorship as well um, at Salford University, which I'm um, I'm enjoying and I have aspirations to do to become a, a scene, take up a senior leadership role in the game at some point. So one one experience I've had of um, racism in a stadium was actually by my own fans. Unfortunately, it was at um, Blackpool. Uh, for, when I was playing for Blackpool, we were away at um, Preston local derby and um, I was sat next to Adrian Forbes, one of um, one of our players, and we're watching a game and. One of our own fans at the time said, made a racist, racist statement about some of the Preston North End players, and um, me and Adrian overheard it. Uh, it was obviously hugely disappointing. This, this kind of, they knew we were sat there, and they probably felt that because we were saying it about somebody else, it didn't matter, didn't it matter to us. But obviously, it did. It's just pure ignorance, man, and. A lot of racism, in fact racism is just ignorance, it's nothing else, it's, it's a lack of education, lack, lack of understanding. Um, it's tough to take, but it's, yeah, it's really tough to take, but it's, it's, it's sad. I look at people more with, um, yeah, yeah, I feel sorry for them rather than more than anything, that they're that, that narrow-minded. Um, but yeah, it's all about education and it's all about we need to keep p pushing and telling people why it's wrong and, and how they need to change their behaviours. If I think it's gone too far, I'll stamp it out. Generally, 
if, 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 it's, if I feel it's light-hearted and funny, then so be it. It's, 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 it's a really tough, tough area with a lot of grey gray lines, but I'd say to players in that position, listen, if you feel that you're, if it's gone too far, stamp it out, let them know. If it carries on, report it. But it's just not, just not the racism factor, it's just football in general, the drinking culture, the, the way, you, way, we, where we, way you talk and the way you, you're around people, it's all changed and, and for the better, for sure. Um, yeah, things were a little bit, I'd say, old school, but they were when I was playing and the game's come a long way and it's still got a long way to go, don't get me wrong, but um, there's been a lot of progress made and, and yeah, times have changed.